Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and we're going to be talking about toxic and metabolic diseases of the central nervous system. I have nothing to disclose related to this topic. If you see names on any of the images, these are the MedPix case contributor, not the patient's name. MedPix is an online open access medical image teaching file hosted by the National Library of Medicine. Our learning objectives, to distinguish vascular from metabolic lesions of the deep gray matter, to describe common features of toxic and metabolic diseases, to differentiate methanol from carbon monoxide poisoning. So toxic and metabolic disorders are often bilateral and non-localizing, that's in terms of imaging as well as neurologic signs and symptoms. One notable exception to that is non-ketotic hyperglycemic hemichorea, which as the name suggests is typically unilateral. Patients may have encephalopathy, seizures, and coma, and there's a plethora of causes of toxic and metabolic disorders. We may have carbon monoxide, methanol, ethylene glycol, manganese toxicity, copper and iron metabolic disorders, hyper and hypoglycemia, genetic mitochondrial and enzyme diseases, electrolyte disturbances including hyponatremia, uremia, dialysis, water intoxication, and we may have a vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency and elevated ammonia because of liver problems, and the patients may also have solvent encephalopathy. We can also have anoxia and hypoxia as a cause of a toxic and metabolic disorder. Let's start out with a case. Five-year-old boy with encephalopathy, no history of infection, no recent vaccination, no immune modulated therapy. We can see here on the axial and coronal images that there are multiple bilateral lesions, very symmetric, and they appear to be localized to the gray matter of the thalamus. So we have bilateral thalamic lesions in an encephalopathic child. What's the differential diagnosis for this? Well, we could have a vascular etiology. We could have deep vein thrombosis involving the internal cerebral veins or the straight sinus. We could have a vascular problem involving the arterial supply, the basilar artery, the posterior cerebral artery, or the artery of Percheron. It could be an embolus, etc. We can have a metabolic disorder like Wernicke's encephalopathy from thiamine associated with alcoholism or hyperemus gravidarum. And we can have infectious encephalitis that localizes the thalamus like West Nile Japanese encephalitis and also creutzfeldt jakob disease. And there are patients who have bilateral thalamic diffuse gliomas.